very first part of our guided notebook for statistics. Part one of the guided notebook, we're writing our own materials this semester so that we can really get to the heart of why statistics is important and what you should be able to do at the end of the class. So what I mean is, if you have a bunch of information, data, I would like you to know how to organize it, how to picture it, and how to analyze it. And when you see other kinds of visuals in the newspaper, online newspaper nowadays, or on Facebook or wherever you know you get your information from about the world I would like you to be able to know if the data is collected reasonably if the graph makes sense and that way you can make more informed decisions about your life so I'll get off my soapbox <laughs> and we'll go ahead and get started so every day we're inundated with facts how do we know if they're true do we believe the media no, don't just believe everything you read or hear. Even if your friend sounds super sure about this information, you don't know where they got their information, right? And it's always about their opinion, right? So they'll be biased. Make sure you check out the source of the data, how it was obtained, and the way the data and if the way the data set is pictured, we'll just say for now, is misleading. When is it appropriate to use data to make, we'll call them inferences, like inferences. And how do we know if, you know, what you infer will be true or if what you predict comes to pass? We will be going about the course a little differently. So again, the goal is for you to be able to use your innate statistical number sense. I'm sorry about the tapping. Um, I couldn't find the cord for the microphone. <laughs> so we will be a little bit uh, old school here. All right, so data types and their graphs. This is chapter one and we're on section 1.1. Data and variables, what the heck is data? Well, if I wanna know something about my students, that means you, I would have to collect information. And then after I collect it, wouldn't I have to record it somehow? Well, the information that you collected and recorded is data, right? Data is the plural, datum would be singular. Statistics, the subject, is the science of data and its variation. There's other really cool things in there as well, like probability, one of my personal favorites. Some important factors are how data is collected, pictured, and analyzed, and how statistical studies are designed. Super important. And, you know, what inferences or predictions and or predictions are made based on your data. So when you look at real life, the majority of people break down data as quantitative and qualitative, right? So within quantitative, there is ratio data and interval data Ratio data can meaningfully, we, we can meaningfully add, subtract, multiply, and divide, as long as you're not dividing by zero, right? Um, whereas interval has no real zero. So let's look at these cute little pictures on the side and think about it. And when you're thinking about no real zero, it doesn't mean there wouldn't be a measure of zero, but does that measure really make sense in context? So, clocks, right? Does anyone ever say it is zero o'clock? No, 
right? So there's no real zero, uh, you know, for, for telling time, right? So this one here would be more of an um, interval type of data. And again, sometimes there's overlap depending on, you know, the context. All right, but like we often think about time zero as an initial starting point for some, the way some function behaves or whatever. But um, the, most of the time, <laughs> time and temperature are both considered to be interval data. And weight, right? So here we have this uh, scale this would be ratio data because something could weigh zero pounds. You could think about zero pounds. Um, you can add weight, dub, add weights together, double weights, multiply weights, and it's meaningful. Um, and over here, again, like uh, measures, distance measures. This one I think has centimeters and inches or maybe centimeters and millimeters, this would also be ratio data, okay? All right, so here we go. Next up, qualitative data, often called categorical. Qualitative data um, is just like it sounds. We're, we're collecting some sort of quality aspect, right? So nominal is where it's really just more names. There's no natural order to the names. Ordinal, you could order. And again, sometimes there's overlap. It just really depends on how you're using the data. But just looking at these visuals, what do you think? So if we look at education of Wikipedia editors, we can see that uh, there's some that had a just primary education, not too many. Then others had, that's interesting, isn't it? Secondary, right, which would be high school. And we've got bachelor's associate, master's, and PhD. So most of them have a bachelor's or associate degree. So here, what, what do you think? Could it, these are, notice, name categories, which are made up of names. And the percentages are how many people fall in that category. So definitely qualitative data. And here, I would call this one ordinal because, you know, we go to school in a certain order, right, for the most part. And um, we could order them from, you know, one, two, three, four, five, going from primary to PhD or something like that. Okay, so, all right, what about gender? Uh, we've got four measures here, male, female, prefer not to say, or other. And um, this is called a pie chart. The other one was a bar chart. Those are very typical um, ways to illustrate qualitative data. And here, you know, there's no ranking here. Do you see that? Um, there's no real thought for saying male would be one, female would be two, prefer not to say it would be three, and other would be four. So here, this one would be definitely nominal. All right, so social security cards. So what do you think? This is kind of one of those things that I suppose could go both ways because you see that even though there's numbers here and even though I guess you could add or subtract social security cards, the thing is is that they're just really a way of naming a person a number. So I think here it could go both ways. I mean, this one certainly could be ordered, right? So I, I think we could definitely say it's ordinal because you could sort your data by social security number, right? Going from, you know, smallest to largest or largest to smallest. But my, I would kind of look at this as more more nominal in my opinion but again it it always depends on the context of your data and then political affiliation in this in this case we've got just the uh, <laughs> the 
Democrat, Republican, and um, this one we definitely wouldn't want to rank. <laughs> you, know, you would get into a lot of fights and parties, right? Or at parties. This one would be a nominal selection, all right? Or nominal data. Now, be careful. Qualitative data is often coded using numbers. The key is to think about the data in context. So you've all, I'm sure, participated in satisfaction surveys after you've been, you know, helped by the cable company or, you know, someone provided some service to you. Oftentimes you get surveyed. And we often, we statisticians often assign numbers to that data. And once you assign numbers to that data, it's kind of weird because it turns into sort of quantitative data in a sense, although the initial data was qualitative. But once you code it, sorry, the dogs are going off. Once you code it, you can use quantitative methods um, to analyze it. So it's actually really kind of cool. So just like there's two main types of data, there's two main types of variables, um, numerical and so what's the difference data input you collect and record does not change right once you create groups or classes the information collected within each class right will vary. So again, that's within the group or the class. So for example, if your data consists of, say, daily revenue over the past three months, each individual day's actual revenue, right, has no variation. If you sold 1500 bucks worth of shoes on a Tuesday, or Tuesday, the 21st of August, 2018, right? Then that's not going to change. But if you decide to organize the data by day of the week and you look at the totals for each Tuesday over the last several or three months, the three revenue inputs per day of the week will likely be different, won't they? So that's where the variation comes in. There are, so numerical variables. There's two types of numerical variables. Discrete, which is typically measured by some sort of account. So if you're looking at, say, one dozen, the cartons of one dozen eggs at the Bonds grocery store that you shop at near your house. Let's say you got mad because one day there were like three broken eggs when you got home. So you wanted to just check, okay, is it, I'm gonna look at my store, I'm going to examine every single carton of one dozen eggs and I'm going to find out how many are cracked in each carton. Well, what would happen is each egg in its shell is a whole number, of course, starting at one. You could have one, two, three, et cetera, eggs cracked all the way up to 12. Let's think more about this situation. If you are only interested in the number of cracked eggs and each one dozen cartons, sorry, at this bonds, you would have collected population data. If you were only interested in that bonds on that day. But what if you wanted to make a supposition about all the bond stores in San Diego, right? Just using this one store, information from the one store. That would be sample data. We will get more into that as we go on. Now, continuous numerical var variables are measured in some way that could include partial units. That's the easiest way to think about it. So length, you know, you could have, if you go in inches, you could have a partial inch, right? Um, height, would be one. Weight is another one. Uh, maybe dollar amount, temperature. 
Those are all continuous measures, although dollar amount probably could go either way, um, depending on if you were thinking just dollar dollars themselves, right? Instead of uh, those categorical variables are used to collect information about a certain characteristic. So let's think about it. What are three characteristics that you might be interested in? And it may not be the only thing you're collecting, by the way. A lot of times we collect a whole bunch of information. Uh, the data can be both, you know, the different types of data collected for a s certain study. We could collect both categorical we, we could have categorical variables and we could have numerical variables. But if you were thinking about categorizing in some way, what, what might be something? Well, I just had a facial. <laughs> so I'm going to say skin type, meaning do you have dry skin, combination skin, oily skin? I was asked that at my facial. So that would be a category, right? Then you would have However, you would define the categories and then count, you know, figure out how many people in your study um, fell into that category. Uh, let's see, gender is often used, especially in education studies. And how about ethnicity? There's many, many other ways that we categorize, you know, data, use categorical data, but um, it is, um, something that you can, instead of defining them as a, your, your data as a number, you would get say eye color, skin type, gender, ethnicity. All right, so oftentimes we code, as we were talking about, code categorical data responses using numbers. So if there's a situation where there are only two possible responses, such as yes or no, we usually code yes is one and no is zero. This gives us a quick way to measure attendance at a workshop, number of people in a sample who eat red meat, etc. cetera. Uh, this is actually called a binomial random variable if you have just two possible responses. Um, we can also code using an ordered scale. This is often done when we analyze um, satisfaction level. So you guys do this, don't you? When you, when you rate your instructor either at Rate My Professor or at uh, this when the school hands out the ratings. And so oftentimes we, you know, it, it's a strongly disagree, disagree, no opinion, agree, and strongly agree are often numbered maybe one to five respectively or negative two to two respectively once they are coded. And so what I see when you guys rate me through the school is they'll give me a median measure, which is one type of measure of center, and they'll give me a mean measure, which is a, which is another measure of center, right? That's like an average. And um, so notice that even though that was categorical data, we were able to use numerical methods in order to analyze it. All right. So have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.